you could have gone to Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, all of these companies, and uh, you did not choose to do that, where you could have made two hundred thousand dollars salary. You decided to go a founder route. I don't know if this is a common knowledge or not, but failed startup founders are preferred a lot for product managerial roles. Why did you decide to not go the traditional route and get a job and like pay off the loan or like? I saw him on LinkedIn. He was he started like seven eight startups. I'm like, man, this is cool. I, I just put a session with him, and then I showed everything what I did, and he's like, cool, you are in the right path. Go build an MVP. International students who are on F1 visa who are dreaded that okay, I got OPT and then I have two years a uh, STEM extension. I have to get my H1B. If I start a startup, sure, first year on OPT you can have your own startup and do it. But then comes the STEM extension, then comes yeah, the H1B. Yeah. Like there's a lot of uncertainty. How did you navigate that fear? We are under this assumption that it's only jobs that qualify uh, mm. under the but it's, it's mostly not. And you can have as many employments as possible in the first year. Okay. At this point, no money was raised. This is the mistake that I did. I started asking $500,000. Before you watch this, I want to quickly say that most people underutilize LinkedIn. They don't understand the power of LinkedIn and how to leverage LinkedIn to get jobs. I have built an ultimate course. It's going to teach you everything from optimizing your profile, getting sourced by a recruiter on LinkedIn. There are live examples and also how to use LinkedIn and leverage LinkedIn to create the job opportunity that didn't even exist. You didn't even know that it existed. Let me give you a quick sneak peek and I will tell you that more than 350 students have joined this course and they are loving it. And you can see everything from setting your profile, networking, search techniques, job hunting technique, and like live examples where I'm actually reaching out to people and doing cold networking, etc. You'll also get free plugin, premium plugin for uh, H1B and OP and all of that so i highly recommend you check out link will be in the description thank you rohan for doing this i am excited i think you are the first uh, founder uh, or a startup founder who is also an international student on opt is we are going to talk about like how to you know process stem opt how to register startup what type of startup and all of that so like i'm excited excited to finally have someone who could actually give us the details of like how does it all work because i know there are probably many others rohan like you who wants to do it but we don't have resources so again thank you for being here i'm excited for you to be here the pleasure is mine Yudi. i mean uh, two years ago i was on the other <laughs> side watching you tell stuff about Tell this, make these beautiful videos about coming to masters, about EMD, how what you plan and everything. And meeting you here is, is uh, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much. Yes, and awesome. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Before we deep dive, uh, let's do like a quick uh, intro. Where are you from? Uh, when did you come to United States? What are you? What did you study in United States? And of course, we know that you're a founder, but maybe you can talk a little bit about that as well. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm Rohan Pradyumna and I am from Hyderabad. I did my undergrad in MGIT and here I came from a master's in information systems from the University of Maryland College Park. Uh, during my college, I started my first startup. Like in my OPT, I started my first startup, Travana, and then I merged with another startup called Intrepid and now we're operating as Intrepid. So mm. that's a little introduction about, yeah. Nice. Uh, and I want to like, uh, of course, we're going to do multiple startups and talk about your <laughs> UMD journey as well on the side. Uh, but maybe like maybe we can do a slight uh, detour to UMD. Uh, what was your experience? Uh, what did you study in UMD? Oh, I studied information systems from Robert Head Smith School of Business. Mm. Yeah. What was it like? Like, how was the experience? Oh, it was amazing. So I, I loved my UMD, my time in UMD. It was three semesters. It was a fast paced course. The first semester was a little fast paced by, but by the time, by, but by the end, it, it's, it's pretty decent and last semester is pretty light. So UMD was amazing, uh, especially my course being a techno managerial course gave me a lot of perspective towards digital businesses. Uh, I've not mm. known disruptive innovation, uh, building digital businesses, managing them, strategizing with them. 
all of this knowledge was not there when I was in India. And this is something that I learned here in USA in college. So I had very good time and we had courses like technical courses like machine learning, which mm-hmm. I also use in my current startup. So it's it's been a wonderful journey. And yeah, UMD is phenomenal being very close to DC. Uh, I got a lot of um, uh, access to the Indian embassy through my club. So I was mm-hmm. working at Daisy UMD. There's a, there's a club in UMD which gave me a lot of access to embassy. So I was able mm-hmm. to meet all these amazing delegates. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so it, you said it was three semester. How yeah. expensive is it? Uh, what is oh. the, what like? Yeah, it is on the expensive end. Uh, I spent about sixty thousand dollars in student uh, in fees. Just the mm. credit itself costs sixty thousand dollars, and mm. then around thousand dollars, thousand to eleven hundred dollars uh, for a private room in a in a like in a house. Like your apartment. House. Oh, no, you no. had an independent house, or you had no. like a, your private room apartment. Yeah. Type. So, Eight of us from Hyderabad, we rented out an independent house and it had eight rooms. So we shared, like, we got one room each. Eight bigger... rooms? Yeah. Um, that must be like a full big boss drama then. Oh, no, I mean, it was more <laughs> party house. Uh, we hosted 100, 120 people at the time. We had a huge backyard. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so all eight of us, all eight of you were all Indian international students or was yeah, there yeah. a different demographic as well? No, no, no. Indian international, Telugu speaking. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, That is amazing. And so you said that's, uh, that, so that was $1,000 for yeah. rent or was it like yeah. living expenses? 700 was rent and three to 400 was the living expenses. I had a car, so that had a little bit of more fuel. Uh, cost mm. which all which we all shared to be honest and yeah but 400, three Wait, to 400 I'm, I'm i'm curious like so you had a car in in three semesters usually students don't have that so to, like uh what was this like an intentional decision that you made that okay i'm gonna buy a car no i didn't buy a car uh, i was gifted one there was this so my family has a tradition my uncle bought a corolla in 2007 okay. everyone who came to us used that as their first car so by the time it came to me it was a fifth hand car <laughs> okay Got 2007 it. corolla very old very beaten down 180 miles 180k miles all of that but it was amazing it made my life mm. very and mm. to be honest it was a conscious decision i wanted a car anyway because uh UMD is though it is very well connected with metro and transit uh, car will make your life much easier. You, uh, yeah, you it, can drive to DC, Virginia, all of yeah, those places. Yeah. And it opens up for a lot of possibilities. Like I know it for a fact that at least two, two and a half hours get wasted every day if you use transit. Mm. Time which you cannot like, you can't read in that time. You can't plan anything. You can't like, it's, it's, it's just wasted. You're waiting in bus mm. stop. It's Again, it's DC, it's cold. And December's are like, so brutal yeah, yeah. <laughs> a car felt a right decision and yeah my uncle was gracious enough to give it to me so it's fun that's amazing so yeah. <laughs> so your expense was typically thousand dollar i'm assuming the students might be less a little less since you like most students don't have car so i'm assuming they don't yes. have to pay insurance and fuel and all of that so so yeah, for them, it isn't. might be a little less. But in your case, fifteen thousand. I'm assuming it, since it's a three semester, so fifteen to sixteen uh, yeah. months. Yeah, around yeah, that. Yeah. So, uh, and then sixty thousand for this, so seventy five thousand dollars total yeah. expenses. Yeah. Uh, and th- there's a context behind why I'm asking you this question, yeah. which is coming <laughs> now, is that uh, so obviously you could have gone to Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, all of these companies. Uh, and uh, you did not choose to do that where you could have made two hundred thousand dollars salary you decided to go a founder route which i think a lot of people think that founder makes a lot of money but not in the initial years they make like (laughs) bare minimum so what like why did you decide to not like just go the traditional route and get a job and like pay off the loan or like like recover the money etc what you're going to watch is an amazing story. But before you watch that, I just want to quickly say that 
all of these story i compile the key insights from these stories and all the podcasts that i do and i put this in my free exclusive newsletter community every week more than 16000 people receive my newsletter and they love it and here are some of the examples you can see this was a podcast on george mason universities and you can see how to network and 10% cold emailing uh, powerful linkedin techniques and so and so forth so if you are interested in becoming part of this exclusive newsletter community absolutely free link is in the description or you can go to udj.com/newsletter yeah i mean udi um, i think that the answer is pretty straightforward so when we talk about this we almost picture being a founder and being a fang employee in in a few uh, op- opposite lines which don't intersect but yeah. the reality is very different right i can start being a founder and i can walk until i can and if i realize that this is not what i want to do i can pivot and go back to being a fang employee uh and i i don't know if this is a common knowledge or not but failed startup founders are preferred a lot for product managerial roles where you have experience working with cross functional teams you have experience in working in stressful scenarios you have experience working with investors clients whatever you have done b2b sales you have led tech teams you have you have worked with design so i think that's a recipe for being a good product manager mm. right so when i started i barely had anything on my profile so i so I, this is again like there's a lot of a lot of thought went in to get this, this to take this decision but when i came in in my first semester i started applying to jobs and mm-hmm. first 60 internships that i applied all straight rejected like mm-hmm. and it's not it's not that i was not applying consciously i was crafting letters i still remember my duolingo application i was mm-hmm. a very big fan of duolingo i wanted to get in there was a junior product manager role everything seems well i wrote a cover letter beautiful cover letter and then crafted my resume well only to get a rejection mail right when i reviewed when i when i changed hats and when i changed shoes uh, mm. i realized that there is just a huge pool of talent available and for me to be selected i don't have an x factor in my profile that will make me stand apart right i have one year of experience working as an associate product manager and then bachelor's from electrical engineering which adds shit to my profile not nothing but one line <laughs> so it makes sense for me to realize then i realized very soon that i don't have anything awesome to offer mm. and i realized that i will build that something and after that i'll apply and that's when this light bulb moment of this idea came in and i i had two options one do courses do certifications do projects and apply make thousands of applications and not have a confidence of hearing back or take this route take the plunge and see where this goes see the depths of it. because i always wanted to be a businessman always wanted to be a founder uh, that that was always there never wanted to be an employee always wanted to be my own boss that that's a mentality that i had from childhood like i've been entrepreneurial in non profit spaces and this was not the first startup i pitched this was the third startup mm. i pitched two more startup i startups before but they were like at a very young young age so that uh, that blood was always there to go do this thing and when i had that opportunity when i knew the technology when i felt that i had the recipe to do this and make it successful when i did the market research everything felt like it came to a common point of intersection mm. and i just took the leap but uh, it's it's probably right now i mean looking back it feels like it, it was meant to be but but when maybe when you were in the midst of it it probably you went through the fear of uncertainty what if yeah. this doesn't work out right like uh, and you still don't know if it, this is going to work out like because you are still in the growing yeah. stage uh, but, but the biggest fear and again i'm putting myself in the you know feet of international students who are on f1 visa who are dreaded that okay i got opt and then i have two years uh, stem extension i have to get my h1b Uh, and i if i start a startup sure first year on opt you can have your own startup and do it but then comes the stem extension then comes yeah. the h1b like uh, like there's a lot of uncertainty how did you navigate that fear oh yeah so i had 
uh, very sizable checkpoints for every month, every three months, almost every month, I guess. So I had certain uh, uh, aims slash goals for mm. each for 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 a quarter or for three months, and I continued to go into the next three month cycle only if I have outsmarted myself. And trust- can you explain a yeah. little bit more? Yeah, so I graduated in December, hmm. right? So the the first three months ka goal was that I wanted to get, uh, I wanted to stabilize my startup, get some recognition. Now I did not have or plan how. It was not like ki mujhe Antler, I wanted to go to Antler or I wanted to go to a startup accelerator. The education was not there. Like I didn't know that these things existed. Right. Mm. Only after I started researching and getting deep into the waters, I understood that there are so many opportunities. But the idea was that in the next three months, I need to get a little bit closer towards getting being funded or being mm. funded, not funded mm. but fundable. Right. Mm. And in the first three months, I got placed into Angular Startup Accelerator program. Mm. So the okay. start, fourth month started with Angular. Mm. Right. And yeah. then right on the first day of Antler, I still remember the goal was that he, I wanted to have a co-founder. Okay. And mm. that has realized like in the next month, I got a co-founder, we merged our companies and we're building this thing. Right. And the cycle run that I'm right now in right now, I want to get funded more than 1050, 150 K. We are at $80,000 now. So. Mm. It's not like I have made a leap into something that I had no idea about. I had very sizable checkpoints and these numbers were also not arbitrary. Like for me to give myself a STEM extension through the startup, I need to show proof of funding that I can be employed. Mm. So by the December, by, by December, if I have about 150, 250 K on my, on, in my bank, then I can clearly show that I can give myself a $65,000 bare minimum salary. So I'm safe for another one year. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Uh, yeah. And, and yet, uh, so, sorry, I, I, the, the, the pause I am having is because I'm thinking through this, uh, you had 80, you said, you just said 80,000, uh, and then you also have a co-founder, yeah. um, typically your type, your type of talent would you know, easily get maybe 120, 130,000 base, uh, right? Um, and so that's like in 50% yeah, yeah. of what you're making right now. So uh, did you not feel like FOMO, uh, fear of missing out? Like I'm missing out on the money that I could be making? No, I mean, I had the biggest fear of missing out on this opportunity because money I can always earn back. Hmm. This age, this opportunity, this this no strings attached mentality because I, so I have a cousin, he wanted to start mm. a startup, then he got mm. like married and now it's much harder for him mm. to go start a startup. Right. Mm. Now, uh, so when f- f- the duties of life as the start to kick in, it gets harder and harder to take the sleep. Right. So, so you were okay on compromising lifestyle initial lifestyle uh, to build the yeah. future lifestyle yeah. right I mean, one year of risk sounded very reasonable judy i mean i i don't i don't i would be lying if i said i thought thought this a lot mm. because now even a failure from here would make me a second time startup founder which would, mm. would have given me a lot of wisdom to go into my next venture all guns blazing will give me that x factor that i lagged when I was applying for jobs. So mm. all of this is covered and the sacrifice is just one year. And considering this job market, I feel I don't, I, I, it's, it's not a really big deal to pursue this direction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, one more ahead. point here is that I am lucky that I have a family here that takes care of me and that gives me uh, shelter and food, uh, so that I don't have to worry about it and I can work on my startup like 10 to 12 hours a day. Mm. So that's that's a that's a thing that i have that's a privilege that i have but yeah at the same time i did compromise on not making this uh 120k or like 
this is seven months into this. Yeah, you don't have health insurance, probably yeah. you have to buy your own. You don't have your retirement saving going on. Yeah. You don't have investments going on, right? Yeah, uh, yeah I totally get it. Uh, and so in your opinion, uh, again, this is probably the last question on mindset. And then I, mm-hmm. I know probably audience is like, bhai, kab ka ki yo to OPD, you know? so, so I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, but uh, one last question on mindset is that it sounds like you had a very calculated thought process ki theek hai this one year of opt i need an extension if i didn't hit certain checkpoints like milestones then at some point 3 months before the extension requires i'm going to start looking because i need to sustain so that was your plan but luckily because you were full focus putting 10 to 12 hours you kept hitting those checkpoints and like there's no going back i mean this is working as i'm thinking about it yeah is that is that it i mean that was a mindset and honestly like i would have taken a u-turn at any point of time here like had i not mm. had anything in the first three months i would mm. have like but in the first three months i got close to getting investments i got promises from people to invest five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars i got into an accelerator so if all of these didn't happen then i would have taken a u-turn on all the way and mm. that would have been totally cool because my yeah. opt started in february Mm. So it's yeah. only like four months into my OPT, and yeah, I, I felt you're already at 80k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. So, okay, um, let's go back in time. And uh, what led you to start this company? Like, how did the idea came about? Like, what is the what 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 is the startup about? Yeah, so uh, I think it was spring break in 2023. Mm. Uh, after a very very thick first semester second semester was a little light and breezy and i don't I mean, believe when you say thick semester because you, you just said like you party people, <laughs> <laughs> people. bro like first semester had 13 credits it was <laughs> <laughs> that right meant, yeah right so right second semester was a bit easy uh, chill so, okay huh. yeah then everyone was like let's let's go somewhere spring break is coming uh we haven't gone out by the time we even even though we had car we didn't the only thing we went out was for the uh fall colors uh view in shenandoah uh not much so everyone was like okay let's go a to pills and okay cool and i was the most traveled person in the in my house and i took the responsibility of travel planning then everyone was like okay let's go miami spring break the south is good beach and all but uh, we will chill <laughs> so like okay cool then i started researching about miami and the thing is like i came from india i went to washington dc i had no idea about how geographically the city of miami is located right i knew mm-hmm. it doesn't but that's that's the that's the end of the information i had about miami yeah. so then the whole process the research process started i started going reading articles about miami i read it on trip trip advisor about what what can be done in miami then i watched mm. videos then i spoke to friends who went to miami to get insights right so i spent a good 30 to 35 hours mm. in travel planning and then we made a group called miami and uh, <laughs> let's uh, go miami the- i think that's <laughs> what you said <laughs> <laughs> yeah and everyone was posting what they wanted to do so i had to uh, take that into account and a lot of back and forth back and forth and we landed on an itinerary mm-hmm. right now a master student uh very diligent in work and everything planned something for 35 hours you expect it to go right right mm-hmm. it was it was very wrong in <laughs> like we hit the road and uh, it, it started raining and the key west drive we did it in the rain <laughs> there was some random party happening uh, in South Beach, Miami, and we wanted to go. But by the time we found our parking, the party was over. Mm. So mm. a lot of difficulties. Uh, I-, I faced a lot of difficulties, but my friends never really noticed all of this. They were just chilling there in the vibe. But me, who was mm. who spent 35 hours into this, I was like, why is this going so wrong? Like, I'm a decently intelligent person. It shouldn't be so hard for me. That's when uh, I sat down on the beach, of, on the south beach of Miami, and I took out my iPad, and I drew out a, pro, a, a low fidelity wireframe for an application that would use generative AI 
and weather APIs and stuff, and that can solve for this problem. So that mm. was a whole moment. So the whole trip, uh, everyone was chilling. The only thing was that was running in my head was, okay, how can this thing plan out? What all can it have? Can we have weather integrations? Can we have collaborative? How should the accesses be? Like we are driving most of the time we are on road. So how do you account for uh, that kind of user experience and all of that, all of this was running. So I came back and uh, we finished semester and then there was a three month spring break. So summer break, summer okay, break. Sorry, yeah, summer break. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, really, uh, having all the good folks it has, I had good friends in human computer interaction. So, mm -hmm. hey, guys, so I'm please. assuming at this point, sorry, uh, one second. So I'm assuming at this point you didn't have internship. Uh, like you did not have internship and you were not planning to go back home India. You are going to utilize yeah. somewhere to be there and work, I'm assuming, in your on your app. Yeah, so I had an internship. Oh, you uh, did? Yeah, okay. I had an internship, but I didn't do it. Like I didn't, uh, I had an on-campus <laughs> job and I had an internship. But the point was the internship was uh, through someone I knew. It was in a company that I knew. So I was like, I didn't, I didn't do much to get that internship like I wanted. And they, they had a project management tool that they were building and they wanted someone to oversee. I was available for three months. I said, okay, come on board. So technically I did, but I didn't choose to do that. And I had an on-campus job, which was very chill. It was friend desk job is to just go log in and done. Uh, <laughs> that gave me a lot of time. So. Yeah. My friends at Human Computer Interaction, they helped me a lot. Hmm. So they bought the idea, uh, like they streamlined the idea and they bought it to life. Hmm. They helped me design components, colors, uh, and so on and so forth and up until a video prototype. Hmm. So okay. till this point, like this is three months, uh, two and a half months into after having the life bulb, light bulb movement. I had no idea of what tech will go in. I had no idea of how will I get this thing to work. All we were, all we had was a video prototype. Mm. So then I took that prototype to all the places and this is where I used the resources. So, uh, we had an entrepreneurship center in our college called Dingman center. Mm. And they had advising hours. So they had advising hours with people who were businessmen, lawyers, uh, business, uh, like finance guys and everyone. So there was this guy, Ivan Shubin, he was a serial entrepreneur and I found like free advising hours. I'm like, nice. I saw him on LinkedIn. He was, he started like seven, eight startups. I'm like, man, this is cool. I, I just booked a session with him. And then I showed everything what I did. And he's like, cool. You are in the right path. Go build an MVP. Mm. Don't know what MVP is. <laughs> like I knew what MVP is. They never built one. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of my startup journey uh, had education, right? So imagine like this, like first one week I used to study about that and the next week I used to work on that. Mm -hmm. so that yeah. was a very rich curve, a very rich experience because mm -hmm. I learned a lot of these things. I learned doing mm -hmm. this, I learned building business models. I mm -hmm. learned building MVPs, which mm -hmm. in itself is a very unique skill to have. So yeah, built my MVP, launched it out, had 700. And when you say you built your MVP, at this point, you are the solo person doing this. Or did you uh, have a team who's helping you with this? No. So I had a friend. I had a friend who was then working with ChatGPT API, like OpenAI's APIs. And that was cool. Like mm. working with an OpenAI API back then was amazing. No one, <laughs> no one in our circle did it. He was the only guy to do it. He was from Stevens. We mm -hmm. happened to meet uh, through common friends. So Krishna, uh, yeah, amazing guy, very, very knowledgeable. So he was like, okay, I love your idea. Uh, I can help you build an MVP. Then we went and like, we put the video prototype and everything aside. And then we jumped into the technical end of it. And we started very small, like we took, we took an API, we used to make calls. And then we used to parse the data that we got into a website. That mm -hmm. was also built on Streamlit. So no complexity. But mm. it's a purpose, mm. right? So it gave good plans out. Yeah. And, and so at this point, this is still not like a register or incorporated as a company. No. You are like, okay, I have an idea. I want to convert this into a product and yeah. you're just working uh, like, so legally, no complications. You're just 
continuing yeah. to work on it as it if you were working on an independent project yeah yeah it is just an independent project but i gave it a structure of a startup huh. because like yeah i wanted to build end to end so yeah i mean uh, then we had this streamlit front end out and we started showing it to people everyone mm. liked it my professors liked it uh, ivan shubhan liked it and back uh, people back at home like my uncles who were who were here for a while they all liked it and they saw that i'm going in a positive direction from there mm. then we started building a better front end website it was me hands on with few friends helping here and there and doing it as a project everyone whenever they had time people pitched in and that's how like so we had a good decent website out by december that's when okay. i passed out. that's when you graduated okay that's when you graduated so okay. yeah now as it came out i had this thing that was looking good that was able to create uh, user inputs into itinerary everything was good and so sorry uh, the the startup the the product idea at this point is i am a traveler i want to go to hawaii and i want to figure out like how to plan my trip at hawaii and so i would basically i would say like here's my interest here's what i want to do um, and your app would give me like a five day itinerary based on you know weather yeah. and all of that right exactly. that's that's the concept okay exactly. um at this point you still haven't raised any money uh, no. and nothing you haven't incorporated the company as well so oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you graduated like and now starts the clock for ead as well yeah so the clock for ead started in february i had 45 right. ha huh. so you chose start. the start date as uh, as a february 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 15th okay right so hmm. now i had 45 days Mm. So this Spotify days, I came back home. I moved back to Dallas. So my whole family is in Dallas, like my uncles and grandfathers and cousins, and everyone was in Dallas. So I moved here, and this Spotify days, I invested in learning, mm. not just reading about build business models, startup. So there was a course that I did in that time, which was really helpful, very much suggestible for anyone who's who's entrepreneurial in mindset like you don't have to start a startup but if even if you're entrepreneurial you should definitely check this out it's by uh, y combinator it's called yc startup school mm. so they had an eight week program which which walked you through the process of setting up a company what you should do from idea to post execution mm. and this. and for this is also for people who we are going to film a whole video on startup to launch uh, yeah. so including for international students uh, sorry for international students only so uh, so that we podcast is separate this one is purely focused on his uh, story sorry ha huh. so you completed this course who yeah. which taught you the principles like from 0 to 1 yeah we're from 0 to 1 you was uh, especially being from getting from 0 to 1 so it was hmm. not just this course it was reading a lot of books like uh, okay. an entrepreneur's handbook by harvard business review getting backed uh, raising millions all of these books that helped me build my pitch decks helped me sort out my story helped me uh, double down on my value prop and hmm. business model and all of that the moment i started my opt uh, like the the clock started uh, i got into um, antler antler was a startup accelerator so it's not a startup accelerator it's a founder in residence program so it okay. helps founders to accelerate and build their startup in 6 weeks time you can go find co-founders build with them connect with people connect with mentors and all mm. so okay. because i got into this program and my opt started i registered travana as a company delivered c corp and i gave myself a self employed opt so that's okay. how okay wait wait there's there's a lot to break into this uh, <laughs> you said it in one line but i think people probably wants more detail yeah, so sure. timeline wise 45 days you you graduated in december you chose the start date of your ead as 15th february yeah. uh, at what point did you incorporate after 45 after, days after 15th february after i got my ead card not even 15th february i don't remember the days correctly but after i received my ead card huh. that's when i started my incorporated my company but yeah 
general disclaimer you can start a startup on f1 visa there right. is no limitation for that you need you, you don't even have to be in the country to start a startup yeah right yeah. but my understanding was that but again the rules are a little gray here so the moment you incorporate a company that means you are an officer of a company that is that can be considered as employment if mm. someone wants to argue that way mm. right mm. so now had i done that in school then it would have been an employment when i was in school hence that should not ha- should not be allowed if someone mm. wanted to argue that way no one would like go there but yeah that is a possible yeah, yeah that's a risk yeah yeah, yeah. So when you have when I have my EAD in hand, I am entitled to be self-employed, and the and the ask for that is that I have a EIN number, EIN employee identification number, and I had that. I after I registered my startup, I applied for EIN number. I got it in two three days, and then I just uh, said I am self-employed, an OPT, and got it approved. So my clock stopped. right okay got it so uh, first step is you registered the company uh, yeah. what did you did you use google like legal zoom or, or like uh, no i used this uh, uh, website called busy b i z okay. right right i right. have heard of that as well yeah. okay um, and then type is c corp uh, so there is a, for people who don't know uh, if you want investments you always want c corp uh, because vcs will not invest in s corp or llc <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and these S Corp, LLC, C Corp is the different types of how the business is structured or yeah. company structured. Yeah. So you did C C Corp. Um, you registered the startup. You got yeah. the EIN number. Now you open a mus- like whatever bank account separate thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So you have this company registered on your name. You are the founder of it. You went to uh, your DSO saying that hey. i want to work for my own company here is the details and my like you know they will update you on your service that you are working for this yeah. is that correct yeah, that's the that's the exact story yeah got it okay and no problem in terms of approval nothing no, no, no questions like so in the first year of opt you are allowed to explore you are allowed to try things mm-hmm. right so we are in this perception that well, well let me just clarify in the field of the education that you did not yeah. like yeah yeah i mean uh, whatever your master is whatever your master is you are allowed to explore in that field mm. of uh, education so uh, right. we are under the assumption that it's only jobs that qualify uh, mm. under this, but it's it's mostly not and you can have as many employments as possible in the first year opt mm. okay yeah. right okay so at this point uh, you have a startup you are opts like going you stop the clock so there is no unemployment days going on um, you are you got into this program enclar accelerator program which uh, helps you build from 0 to 6 weeks uh, you are in there so what happened like from travana to interpret there is yeah. like you know you change the company from travana to interpret like what happened there yeah that that's an interesting story so uh, yeah i realized that if i am a solo founder i had very less chances of making it in the startup mm. game right mm. so i was on a hunt for co-founder that's when mm. i came across this platform called coffee space mm. right so coffee space is a co-founder uh, matching platform it's it's a tinder bumble style co-founder matching platform and nice. i profile that hey i'm on the founder of travana i'm solving for travel planning this is my website if you're interested then let's connect mm. that's when i connected with my co-founder who was already also building a travel planning startup mm. but my approach was with ai his approach was with platform mm. and uh, thanks to the beauty of life he was also working out of austin where my antlers program was so he's mm. like two blocks away from my antlers office right he was working at wayfair and i kind of uh, met him at the wayfair office and we jammed uh, we jammed for a while and then we realized both of us wanted to do the when, same. when you say jam like what does it mean maybe i don't understand the lingo yeah, so we just whiteboarded uh, discussed why we believe what we believe like uh, philosophically i believe certain things about travel he believes mm. certain things about travel then we discussed 
a lot of points, understood each other's opinions, realized that there is truth and there is a, like a, there is a point in the other person's approach as well. Hmm. So hmm. I always saw it, I saw travel planning from an artificial intelligence perspective. And he saw it from a platform perspective. He believed that if I gave someone all the tools needed to plan a trip, then uh, they would they can easily plan a trip and hence it will reduce the friction. Mm-hmm. Both of us were not entirely right. Mm-hmm. Our approaches worked, but we uh, but together we felt it was a better product. Mm-hmm. And down the line, like 10, 15 years, 10, 15 months down the line, I wanted to build the platform he had. And he wanted to build the AI I was building. Hmm. So then we realized it's it's uh, like it's a yeah, match. <laughs> watch, do this and, and and it was not an instant decision. We didn't slam uh, it so early. We spent quality twenty five to thirty hours together hmm. to understand hmm. if it's gonna work. And that's when we realized, okay, this is this is wonderful. And that's when we incorporated a new company called Intrepid. Travana, the name Travana was already taken uh, in Delaware C Corp. So I couldn't incorporate another company as Travana. So then we uh, incorporated Intrepid. How did you come about this name? Like, what does it mean? Oh, so Intrepid was the name, is the working title my co-founder had before. Mm -hmm. And it means like Intrip ID. Oh, gotcha. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. So you guys registered together. This is another company, uh, yeah. also C Corp. And uh, and did you have to go and update your service? Yeah. Disclaimer, this is something people forget. So please don't. You have to go back and update your DSO in the 10 days of your incorporation. Mm. Right. Mm. I realized it in the very late. So I kind of. Called up my DSA, told everything. They updated my service, and everything was cool. But you have to do this, so please don't forget. Yeah. So at this point, no money was raised. Uh, you get did not. Did you get any money, or you're just running all like free, basically? Yeah. So at this point, uh, I had about twenty five thousand dollars in bank. Hmm. Uh, I this was raised from small angels in my circle. So these were my family friends, their friends who were from the Valley, some from Dallas. Mm. They were, uh, I just reached out to them. They saw passion. They knew that this money is going, like this money is gone. But <laughs> this one is 24 year old kid who did not want to take a job, who was beyond convention at that point, And he's persistently working, persistently showing them efforts. And that's something that they couldn't refuse. And that's when they invested. So that's how I got my first box of mm. uh, first $25,000. So this was in. And uh, yeah, after that is the story of the grant that we received. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wait, uh, just before, before we go to the grant. Um, so again, I think this is a miss. A lot of people probably don't, they like, oh, who was going to fund us? I think you raised like a really good point that you probably have the people around you. Um, yes, just yes. ask, uh, ask them. Um, but I think then, then comes the, how much do I offer? Because, you know, you have to offer something in return because they are paying you like 5,000 yes. or something. Yes. Uh, so like, how do you come up with that? Like, okay, if they pay me 10,000, I'm going to give them X amount of equity. Yeah. So uh, again, like I can touch base, I, I can go a deep dive in the next video, but I'll give you a, a, a tease into what happens. So you don't give equity. Okay. Like equity does not come into the conversation yet. So mm. any investor in a very nascent startup gets a something called safe note. Mm. Okay. Safe means simple agreement of future equity. So I'll give you a very basic example. Okay. So you say you are investing $10,000 in my startup. Now I cannot say my, my startup is 10 million valued or 10, uh, my startup has 10 million values. There's no basis because I have not had cash flows. Mm. There, is, there is only work that is happening, but I don't know how much revenue I will generate. Like mm. I can project anything, right? Yeah. Then during this time, valuations are very baseless. Mm. Right now, if I add AI to my name, then I can like value. <laughs> That's what is yeah. happening in the market right now, right? So yeah. 
this is an understanding that investors and founders have that we cannot meaningfully value a startup in in such young age so we agree to issue each other a safe note safe note says that this person has given me ten thousand dollars and when i touch when i when i reach a point of valuation it's called priced round or a round where your company valuation is for the first time defined hmm. by s that's when you say that you will get my uh, you will get equity for the worth of your money at a 30 percent discounted rate that means a 30 or 20 or whatever that means for hmm. ten thousand dollars that you're investing now in one year when i get to a price strong point that will get converted to equity of thirteen thousand dollars because i gave you a 30 percent equity hmm. then there are a lot of um, things here like capped valuation and capped valuation all of that we can talk about that later but the idea is simple so yeah, yeah, yeah. right equity checks yet uh, it is it is a safe note that is issued yeah got it and so this is uh, like friends and family round uh, yeah. safe note round um, and this is still not called is this called pre seed round so combination of everything can be called a pre seed but generally this is called fnf round friends and family round Okay, got it. Okay, nice. So PC is around hundred to one fifty thousand dollars at the lower end, which is what now you are targeting. Yes, now uh, in the next few months uh, we are about to launch our product, and after that is when the pre seed round will be started. Yeah. Hmm. Amazing. Cool. Okay. Let's. Uh, so now let's talk about the grant. So this is F N F round. You had it. Um, you reached out to your close friends family they wanted to support you they gave you the money so there's some income you had operations buying servers domain etc now comes the you raising the actual round of like like uh not round but like getting this grant uh first of all how do you get to know about this round and enkler and all of these things like how where, what are the resources yeah so before even like going to the grant let me talk about resources so i think this is very important there are a lot of resources available around us there mm. you might have visited these buildings that had these resources you might have visited or known these investors or spoke to them who have the potential to invest it's just that we don't see the world in that perspective right the moment you want to see you start seeing the world in that perspective a lot of things open up and there are resources around you your first investors are around you they are in the form of your uncles your cousins your uh buddyvayas your uh, mentors your teachers and a lot of these people right they want to encourage you america is if something america is a capitalist country and it will encourage capital creation right now there is a point that you raised how much do you ask you like this is the mistake that i did i started asking five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> Literally, I started asking five hundred thousand dollars, and then I went back to five thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't know that. Like, it was. It's probably not okay to ask an angel <laughs> investor who is making a two hundred k base uh, to invest in a in a in a nascent <laughs> idea which had no market fit whatsoever to ask five thousand. I didn't know. Like, this is mm. all of it. Education is not really available. I don't. I, I, I didn't do an MBA or neither did, did I come from a startup background. So that's when I learned, did something, failed, realized, learned again, reiterated, and started asking. And that's how I raised. And like I was very easily able to raise like from five investors, five, five, five thousand dollars each. And that's how my twenty-five thousand dollars is good. So. Uh, resources are available, but you need to look for them. And that's when your books, your courses, your podcasts, all of them come into place. Like there are a lot of, I am, I'm a small fish in this game. Like there are a lot of people who have done amazing stuff and there's a lot of resources out there. You just need to go and look. Mm. Right. So yeah. that's when, like when people approach me about questions about startup, I just send them back to these videos. Because sitting there, sitting steadily and watching these videos will give immense knowledge and will make you ask very strategic questions that you are very likely to get answers from. 
rather mm. rather than very open ended questions mm. Mm. interesting yeah uh, and i know we're going to cover in depth about like tools and resources and like things like that in the second video but uh, any like uh, any top of the mind your books comes to mind like okay if someone has an idea today uh, these are the top 5 books i would recommend yeah so the first book i would recommend is 0 to 1 it is it is amazing and yep. then um, hard things about hard things again very brilliant <laughs> book um uh third thing third book i would recommend because and you are because i'm assuming you are in this journey that is an entrepreneur's handbook now this is more like a textbook for startups like it has mm-hmm. lessons about what to do and each step to step um fourth book i would probably recommend uh is the psychology of money this is interesting this yeah. is a version from startup but it gave yeah. me a lot of understanding towards how money is moved Between... and the relationship with the money we have yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so mm. that was that was amazing and as well uh, the fifth book um there's something that i'm del- reading right now building a story brand mm. finding mm. the signal in the noise is an amazing trait of a startup founder and uh, you have to build a story brand you can't build a lot of noise around your brand you have to build a story around it and this is oh my god this book is magical if you read mm-hmm. this book you will be able to decipher any good movie any good company how are they using what they are using so it's it's just magic like is have, that i think yeah. i might have that book is that the red one red color white and red yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 okay got it i i do have it i haven't read it i bought it uh, i actually one of my friend gave me uh, because i was talking about personal branding and uh she told me just read this book and and so i haven't read it but now now even you said it so i'll i'll read it <laughs> that, that's all that's wonderful uh it's it's just amazing yeah nice okay cool uh let's talk about like let's talk about grant and also where can people look for these grants like is this like how do like do, can can i just look up right now and go on google and say like grants for my startup like how do you look up this thing Yeah, exactly the same thing. So um, again, government wants startups to like startups to come. Mm. The ecosystem wants startups to come. Mm. Investors don't. Investors only want very successful startups to come. Investors mm. only want your ideas or MITs or Stanford's to make start make startups. But government wants everybody to start. startups and hence they give out a lot of grants right now i'll tell you my story and maybe you can draw a parallel from there uh both my co-founders so i have three two co-founders right we are three okay, okay. Mm. so interpret was built by a wife and wife and husband dan and erica and both of them are my co-founders mm. so erica works for the economy department of united states right wow. and she was okay. working in maine mm. <laughs> and Maine is an economically backward state. Mm. So they wanted to boost startup activity, and their way of boosting startup activity is recognizing startups and paying them back their expenses. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So now, uh, what we did was we were Delaware Incorporated. We did a foreign registration in Maine. Mm. You can do multiple registrations for your company in different states based on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you have to by default do it in California, but <laughs> because, <laughs> because of California state, if you want to run business in California, yeah. Yeah. So now, because we were we are main incorporated, we were okay to apply for this program called uh, this for this grant by Main Technology Institute (MTI), and we applied. We got a yes. and like we are still in the process of uh, submitting it and money wiring it takes about 45 days to finish the incorporation process and then the money to wire but yeah that is that is exactly what we did then we had to sub- submit a detailed application show why we are eligible and then it was not just because we made a submitted a form we got money there was a lot of history for the startup like dan and erica were working on this for two and a half years i was working on this for the up, up until that point it was more than one it was about one year so there was a combined experience and a very good founder market fit for the startup mm. 
So that's what they saw, and they saw that they thought that we were eligible, and we got in. Hmm. But okay. there are a lot of smaller grants that you can avail uh, in your college, in your uh, state, for hmm. startups. I think like California definitely does, and if you go look up startup grants for by the California state, you might find some. If not grants, then there will be resources that you can use that are as valuable as money. Yeah, I was talking to another founder, uh, um, and he did his master's in CMU, and same, uh, he went to his department. His department recommended that he applies for a grant, and uh, which is a completely, uh, I think it's an entrepreneurship cell in his uh, in the cmu yeah. and uh, they funded him like the first fifty thousand uh, dollar like the first fifty th- huh cmu has amazing uh startup uh cell culture like, yeah, yeah. yeah that is like again it's, it's cmu but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, even in umd i only saw one person in the four batches i was exposed to to get a grant by the university mm. my friend bhagwan uh I kind of, we kind of jammed together about startups. He's also starting a startup now and he got $6,000 by the college. Mm. Just imagine how cool is it? He's paying $30,000 as fees. Yeah, and and there's no up. return except like like equity yeah. or anything. Yeah. yeah it's just not like, we want to support your initiative and here's the money we're giving you. Exactly. Yeah. And now he applied for a $20,000 grant and we didn't he didn't get his decision yet but there is probability there is so much money that college has that mm. can be on these things it's just that you have to realize these resources mm. Mm. got it okay uh so you get now you are waiting for this grant but now also comes opd stem extension what do you need uh from immigration standpoint to get that approved like first year no problem you can be self-employed but the second year now you need like an to establish employer employee relationship yeah. uh, and and it has to be paid it cannot be no longer like non-paid uh, so like yeah what would you what are your thought process okay so i'll i'll, I'll tell you the so the three major uh, rules or, or things that you have for your stem extension is that one is employee employer relationship Two is that you should be paid. Three is that it, the company should be e-verified. Hmm. Company should have e-verified. And there is fourth one, which is kind of more open now. So initially there was this thing that you cannot be owning more than 50% of your company. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. USCIS changed that. USCIS changed that to be that you can own more than 40%. You just need to show 50%, but you just need to show employee employer relationship. Hmm. Now, I have an employee employer relationship with my board. I have shown my board as my employees and employers and they have an authority to fire me Mm. and Mm. they will create a training program for me uh, that I will show on my I-983. Right. And uh, how do you find the board members? Because they they are my co-founders. So all three of us are the board. Oh, okay. So that's it. There's no external advisor board or something like that. So okay. we are the board and we are the founders. Okay. So, well. so yeah. yeah, got it. Uh, and so, sorry, continue. I-93. Yeah. So the second one is E-Verify. If you have an EIN, you can apply for an E-Verify and that's pretty straightforward. You would get it in a yeah. day. Yep. Right. Third one is being able to fund myself. And that's when I said about the 150K that we're trying to raise so that we can show at least two years of salary that the board can pay me. Uh, for 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 my work right so now all three are sorted ish at least as to some point and we're expecting in the next three months to to finish the uh pre-seed round so that i have enough to give myself a salary Mm -hmm. so with all three sorted i'm very much open to apply for a stem extension and there are there are people who did this on f1 visa who did who incorporated companies on OPT and used their own companies to give themselves a stem and also H1 visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's amazing. That's crazy. Um, I again that the same founder I'm talking about CMU one. He did his H1B uh, got picked in 
he filed his h1b from his own company got picked it uh, in i mean obviously he's going to get uh, he got rfe but he responded to rfe and he's like you know pretty confident it's going to get approved there and so uh, i think they just want to make sure that it is a legit company it's not a yeah. staffing agency and it is a real product and uh, all of that so this is cool i'm i'm i think it this opened up my mind when i had the conversation with you and also i know many other uh, student entrepreneurs who reach out to me now i have something that i can show them and, and i know i'm going to connect you with the other two founders who felt like hopeless and that's why i was like i thought of you so i'm glad that you know we we connected and um, sai shout out to sai who connected <laughs> us <laughs> so uh, yeah no i think this is this is great i i feel uh we'll, i learned a lot and i know in the next video we're going to talk a lot more in depth uh, about sure. startup details but uh, any other final words of wisdom things uh, you would like to say to aspiring entrepreneurs uh do it take the leap make the cliff jump uh it's it's not going to be easy it's going to be hard it's going to uh, you will have sleepless nights you will have ambiguity you will have everything but given our life span we only get x number of chances to take do not waste one of it mm. you know like everyone will have a different level of complexity while dealing with this and there is no one size fit all approach for this but the point is if you are determined enough then you can most definitely do this thing it's it's not rocket science it's not something that can't be done there are a lot of examples a lot of people to help it's a very 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 helpful community if the community will come to your aid it has come for me for a lot of times and yeah please yeah. this world is a very messy place and there are a lot of problems to solve definitely pick one and go about it nice i love it a true entrepreneur <laughs> ended with the problem solving <laughs> uh nice i know we didn't touch on why combinator and all of that we will in the other video and uh, we haven't also touched on o1 visa like you know because that is another path a lot of people can take o1 and eb1s uh, as well so uh, we'll touch on some different video but again thank you so much i'll leave uh, your linkedin so people can connect with you and again thank you so much i can't wait for the next one until our next one keep smiling and keep hustling nice